Welcome back to the Athletic Baseball Show for Sunday, September 24th. Yes, that's right. Late Sunday night edition. This is on deck. I'm Stephen Nesbitt. I'm joined by Levi Weaver. How, how's your Sunday night going? Uh, my, my Sunday night just started. Uh, I've been at the ballpark today. I actually went to the ballpark, watched some Rangers Mariners action, which I know we're going to talk about a little bit later. Uh, I played baseball this weekend. I pitched. It was um, a wildly successful. We lost 22 to 7. Uh, most of that wasn't my fault. And uh, no, a lot of it was my fault. And uh, yeah, it's been a, a full weekend. How, how How's life going in the in Nesbitt world? Yeah, we had a good weekend. It was, uh, we're getting some of the, like the remnants in the Northeast from uh, Ophelia, the latest storm to come through. Um, so it was rainy, but it wasn't what, not bad. Um, working on planting some grass in the backyard. That's been my big project. And it's on day two and I'm already like, why is it not growing yet? Uh, so I have no patience. So looking forward it to this. Sunday, September 24th. And it was a high of 101 degrees today here in Dallas. Thanks. So I would love to have some Ophelia in my life. <laughs> oh, oh, I don't want to sing it because it'll be a rights issue. Um, okay, hey, That's today fine. we got we're going to start out west today, um, where the Arizona Cardinals have just taken down the Dallas Cup. Um, let's see, let's, oh, baseball, uh, mm. turn the dial to MLB, and it looks like the Texas Rangers, who we <laughs> trust us, folks, we do everything we can to not talk about the Rangers on this pod. Um, <laughs> But uh, we are pro fish pod. We are not a pro Rangers pod. We just can't do it. It's not a good look for us. Uh, they went ahead and swept the Seattle Mariners to make themselves the latest story of baseball. Um, and uh, it seems like we just kind of got to set the table for the last week of the season here. The ser- season ends Sunday, a week from now. And uh, and we got to just buckle in and, and kind of see what's going to happen here in the AL West. Because as it stands yeah. right now, the Rangers are now in sole possession of first place. In that division, and as I'm looking two here, and a half they, games, they're on Houston. Yep, and, and games on Seattle. When you look at what is set up behind them now, the Rays are are in that firmly in that first wild card spot. They're nine and a half games up from the cut line. The Blue Jays are up two games on the that cut line in the second spot because they just took two or three from Tampa, and the Astros now occupy that last spot, and they just got swept by. Literally the Royals. Literally the hottest team in baseball right now. The fighting Cole Reagans in the Central. And not just got swept by the Royals, but also lost six out of seven to the Royals and the A's, which are not just the two worst teams in baseball this year. They are the two worst teams that baseball has seen in a very, very long time. Like in the last two decades, probably. I mean, we're probably looking back at the 03 Tigers as the last team in baseball that was worse than either of those two teams. And my boys six out of seven from the Astros. What a catastrophic, monumentally horrifying collapse this has been for the Houston Astros. I I I I can't even understand. As someone who grew up, I mean, I grew up a Rangers fan, right? Like, and I'm I'm not hiding that. Uh, but but I didn't hate the Astros growing up because they were in the National League. That's how old I am. I don't have this deep-seated hatred of the Astros. They were my National League team. I liked them. Uh, so I am not just reveling in the destruction of the Rangers uh, division foes. No, I am a an objective journalist and I'm a professional and I am above doing that. But holy crap, this has been wild, wild collapse by the Astros. I, I don't know what's going on. Uh, I can't explain it. It is beyond my it is it is we're into the world. We have gone beyond analyzation. Analysis is the word. Uh, we've gone beyond words that are English words. It is into the awe and wonder uh, echelon of collapses that's happening with the Houston Astros. And, and frankly, other... the Mariners are not doing a whole lot better. They're just doing it directly against the Rangers. That's true. For a lot of other fan bases, the word there is schadenfreude. But uh, Dusty Baker had a lot to say about the current position of the of the Astros. Uh, Chandler Rome has been all over that one. Go read what he's been writing. They're just searching for positives in a, in a very positive list situation. They got worked by Cole Reagans, Jordan Lyles, and Alec Marsh, who was uh, piggybacking as the bolt guy over the weekend. And uh, yeah, a couple of homers from Salvi, Perez, Nelson uh, Velasquez, and Matt Deviates. That's that's going to do you in. And so now... Should have picked a Royal in the home run chase. 
<laughs> I know you may still have time. And um, the Mariners now, the first team out, they're a half game out of the wild card situation. And hey, if you're like me and you're like, how does this keep yo-yoing back and forth between these three teams this much? I, I was looking back at the last month or so from each of these three teams out West. And uh, since September 2nd, the Mariners have only gone on streaks. So no one game, one game, you know, no one loss, one loss, one loss. It was a three game losing, two game winning, four game losing, two game winning, three game losing, three game winning, three game losing. Well, the Rangers have actually done the exact same thing since September 3rd, the next day, only streaks, four game losing, six game winning, four game losing, five game winning. The Astros have lost nine of their last 12, but before that from August 11th to September 6th, so we're almost talking about a month, it was all streaks again. So that's why you're, that's where you're seeing this yep. crazy, these crazy like, swings. Win, 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 or lose, lose, lose. And when we've we've no, known no. for for how long? I mean, we talked, uh, you know, a month ago, probably a month and a half ago, about uh, how there's not enough room for all of them in this year bar, mm-hmm. and this is going to be either, it was going to be either Toronto falling out or right, yeah. And Toronto has done a good enough job of of staying uh, in the mix here. So here here here's how this one shook out here's how the the west was maybe won um the texas rangers started it's really been on the on the bat of Corey seager a lot of this has been done uh he's been fantastic this season there's like a, there's a reason you can kind of begin a discussion about mvp even if you don't finish mm-hmm. that discussion because it's not worth it uh had he had a full season maybe we're talking but uh wasn't on the field the whole time they win the first game eight to five Corey seager and evan carter homer uh, Bryce Miller really struggled for Seattle in that one. Second game, Jordan Montgomery shove piece. Uh, seven innings, shutout baseball. And um, the next game, nine to eight. So it kind of offensive firepower. This one was uh, kind of bonkers. They had six homers, I believe it was. Uh, Simeon yeah, had a couple. Nine speaker. runs, only on home runs. Yeah, Adolis Garcia had one. Uh, Leody Taveras and Evan Carter. And the the I think it was the second Simeon homer uh, ended up going off the glove of Julio Rodriguez, yes. J-Rod doing everything. The game was lost. Was Actually, it wasn't lost because they ended up being a close game. But, um, uh, yeah. yeah it was a one-run right one game. game. Ouch. A one-run game, and that second Simeon home run bounced right off of Julio Rodriguez's glove and over the fence. That was the difference between the loss and, I guess, maybe a tie game. Um, while we were talking about the bats that have uh, kept the Rangers afloat, and it's really, I mean, Jordan Montgomery's uh, masterpiece aside, it really has been the bats that have kept them afloat. And then it's like the pitching, it feels like just sort of putting toothpicks over the fire one at a time and hoping you've got enough to outlast the flame because the bullpen has still just been very shaky. Jose Leclerc had a good ninth inning today, but um, but it has been the bats. And those bats, I mean, it's the lineup has been so deep, especially since they got Josh Young, Jonah Heim, Adolis Garcia back. And added to those three, Evan Carter who everybody kind of saw was going to be a good prospect, but hey, let's see what happens when we get him in the big leagues. You just never know. Well, Evan Carter's hitting 318. He has an 1131 OPS, had another home run today. Uh, I think that's four, three or four home runs since he's been called up. Um, I mean, just let's, listen to this lineup, top to bottom. Marcus Simeon, who, by the way, now has 10 leadoff home runs this year. Corey Seager, who, again, if Shohei Otani were not this demigod sent from some other planet to be a, you know, custom built MVP would be in the conversation. I don't think he is, but he would be uh, Nate Lowe, who won a silver slugger last year, Josh Young, who would have been, I think at least in the conversation for rookie of the year this year, when he was healthy, I think you right there, you know, for rookie of the year this year, spent some time on the, on the injured list, but still 806 OPS. He's hitting 244. Adolis Garcia is by the way, hitting fifth in your lineup. This guy who is was for a long time leading the league in RBIs. He's got 30 odd home runs. Jonah Heim, switch hitting catcher, an all star. Mitch Garver, who honestly kept them afloat. Should be starting nobody else anywhere. was there. Yeah. Yeah. Anywhere else. Nobody else was hitting. He was the only one on this enormous streak. Leody Tavares, who is having a good comeback in the second half, hitting 273 for the year. That's fine. And then in the ninth place is Evan Carter. That is a very strong lineup. Will yeah. their pitching be able to keep? up with that lineup when when the postseason starts lord knows i don't think so but it's it's a good enough lineup to make some games very fun you know what i want to see i want to see jordan montgomery taking the ball in a big game in the playoffs just because that was the whole premise of the yankees trade was like well let's see he's not 
he's not really an October type of pitcher. Uh, mm-hmm. And he's looked great in St. Louis, now looking great for the Rangers. And uh, I think I could see him taking the ball in a game three, game four, um, and uh, everything on the line. And, uh, man, he's been great. All I want is for the World Series to be some teams we haven't seen in the World Series for a while. Give me give me Marlins against Rangers. Give me Mariners against Brewers. That would be amazing. I would love a Mariners Brewers World Series. Um, give me the Orioles. Give me the Diamondbacks. Just I just don't want to see the Braves and the Astros again. I don't want to see the Dodgers in the World Series again. I mean, no, no offense to their fans, but you guys like come on. Share the share the enjoyment for the rest of the world. You're the one percent of sports fans. Let somebody else have a turn. <laughs> I think I think objectively, like the best outcome um, as far as American League would be the Mariners, since they've never won one. Um, Rangers so be, haven't won one either, but the Mariners have never been to one. Been to so. one, right? Yeah. So anyway, just to officially set the table for this last week for the uh, <clears throat> what's going to happen with the the winner of the AL West, the wild card team for the AL West, and likely the team that's first out. Astros have uh, two road series. They're at Seattle, at Arizona. We'll get to that first series in a moment. Mariners, again, face Houston, and they have four against the Rangers. And the Rangers, uh, three against the Los Angeles Angels and four against Seattle. So this is one where you got to take care of business out of the division if you have a chance to. Um, the Mariners have the have the roughest go. Uh, but again, maybe it's the most most opportunities to, to gain ground, right? Every game is a, is a direct, against a direct opponent in the wild card. So, so that'll do it. Yeah, and with that, we can move on to our series previews of the week. And honestly, frankly, we've we've already previewed the series that I want to preview. It's Mariners Astros. Uh, you know, I wrote in the wind up on Friday that it seems like basically we're starting the playoffs now. The Rangers and Mariners are starting the playoffs now because they face each other seven times in the next ten games. You know, if they just beat each other up to about a five hundred rate, then you know one of them is probably in, one is probably out while the other teams control their destiny. But if one sweeps the other, it's definitely over for whichever one gets swept. Well, now the Rangers have swept the Mariners in the three-game series. Um, and it's kind of the same situation with the Mariners and the Astros because the Astros are also coming off of a sweep. So if one of those teams sweeps the other, that's that's got to be done. That's got to be church at that point, unless the Blue Jays just lose the rest of their games. Um, you know, if, if you get swept in this series, that means you've lost six games in a row going down the stretch. More likely, we're going to see a two to one uh, thing happen. But even so, the teams are so close, and they're it's it's so tightly packed. It's all on the line for the Mariners and the Astros. And and I was going to say it's really it feels too early to say that it's not. There's a week left in the season, so this is this is it. It's your backs against the wall. It is time to come out fighting. Um, Astros, Mariners, baby, like one of those two teams is probably in. The Rangers, I think, have done enough to secure a playoff spot at this point. All they have to do, and I am going to knock on my ostensibly wood desk here saying this, is not get swept by the Angels. If you just don't get swept by the Angels, yeah, they're probably fine. Rangers yeah. are probably fine. The Blue yeah, Jays it, are probably fine. It felt like the uh, the Rangers-Mariners was like... Uh series of the year material material for the regular season. This is this is right up there. This is the same deal. Uh this is Astros Mariners for a chance to, to go to the dance and the probables for this one. Fantastic. Tune in for this one. Do yourself a favor. Justin Verlander, Luis Castillo in the first one. Uh Christian Javier, George Kirby in the second, Fran Valdez, Bryce Miller in the third, if this lines up the way Fangraphs expects it to. So that's gonna be a just a, a wonderful well, time. Um I will it's, be watching uh, yeah, the, gonna, the worst. I'm going to have the iPad out. I'm going to have the laptop out. I'm watching Blue Jays. I'm watching Astros, Mariners. I'm watching Rangers. Give it to me, baby. This is the time. Yeah. All yeah. those July nights when I didn't want to watch any and I forced myself to watch baseball, it's all because of this. This is what yeah. I was waiting for. The goal is like make us really care about what all those tiebreakers are heading into the last weekend. If, if it kind of falls apart and the Mariners lose the first two or something, it's like, oh, okay, whatever. All right, my series of the week, I, I, I considered for a, a brief moment the uh, Yankees against Toronto. Uh, but because of what you said, I think if, if the AL West beats up on each other, uh, Toronto's going to be just fine holding on to that second spot in the wild card. So I went with the Cubs going to Atlanta. This is one because the Cubs just swept the Rockies. They are in that final playoff spot right now. One game ahead of the Marlins, two, ahead of, two and a half ahead of the Reds, if I have the updated numbers in front of me. And they finish things at Atlanta at Milwaukee, not really where you want to be, but not the worst time to face those teams, right? Um, right, because they've already clinched. 
They've already clinched. I don't know if the Brewers have clinched a division, but they certainly are about to. Uh, they're not going right. to not going to be caught unless uh, they lose out and the Cubs win out. I think so. Um, the Cubs have been uh, having things uh, tick a lot better lately uh, in that lineup. Ian Happ, Seiya Suzuki has been uh, honestly pretty low key, uh, underrated for the second half of the season. Now that he came back from injury, having great contributions from um, Desi Swanson, Nico Horner, Cody Bellinger, of course, who's uh, authoring an incredible walk year here. Um, and what I'm interested in be, in the Braves beyond the big numbers, right? We talked about this enough. Acuna just is at 40, 68 right now as we speak. The game's going on against the Nationals. Uh, Matt Olson has 133 RBI franchise record. Uh, Ozzy always has been great, but their rotation, what are they going to have come playoff time? Because um, you have had Spencer Strider and Bryce Elder the whole time. Elder has not been all-star first half. Uh, Bryce Elder lately. Alan Winans, Winans, Winans has uh, has been good lately, and Kyle Wright is here, but he seems like maybe more of a bullpen piece come uh, postseason. Max Fried has a blister on his index finger. He should be back. Last I saw for the postseason, Charlie Morton though has a finger inflammation. He's going to miss at least the uh, NLDS. So suddenly, <laughs> as as Levi here holds up his finger that was injured and is in a little cast from uh, hit a ground ball. Bonking you the wrong way? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Tried to try to catch a ground ball by poking it with the tip of my finger instead of mm. catching it with my mitt. That's uh that's one way to flip it over to first base. Um so, All so I, yeah, that's right. So I I don't know exactly how that rotation is gonna shake out. Um once the NLDS starts, that's again a big reason why it's such a, a positive to have that first round buy, that wild card buy. You don't have to worry about those things quite right away. But uh the problems for this one lineup, uh, Justin Steele against Bryce Elder. And then Jamison Tyone against TBD, Marcus Stroman against TBD. The uh, the Cubs rotation seems to be figuring it out quite a bit, and that's a perfect time for it. If you know, assuming they they still manage to sneak in. And by the way, you were correct. The the Brewers have clinched the playoff spot. The their magic number to clinch the Central is one. So the next game that they win or the Cubs lose is uh, is going to be the end of the the uh, the NL Central race. Um, yeah, man. I think if we're consistent, and and we should be consistent. We need we need to be rooting for the Braves against the Cubs because we need the fish to get in the dance. Yeah, I mean, I mean we, that's been... we made we made our bed. Is we we have to we have to sleep in it? That we have no choice. We have to, to go I, fish. I campaign the whole time. I mean, this is a pro fish pod. Everyone, you know, you everyone knows you, it. You you dance with the one that brung you, and we we've been pro fish this entire season. We are not going to flip now. Let's go, Marlins. <laughs> you might flip when you hear what happened in the on the homer chase. Oh, okay. Segway. Levi, you know what time it is. It is time for the On Deck Arcade. We have uh, a lot to get to, so we'll fly through as much of it as we can. The homer chase, our weekly... No, let's start with the arms race, actually, because we can okay, let's, flip let's into our, our picks for this week. The arms race, you uh, you want to go head-to-head -head on this one. I took Tark Skubal. You took Ken Waldachuk uh, of the A's, of course. And honestly, he... Ken was great. Uh, six innings, four hits, two runs, one walk, uh, no, one homer, no walks, seven strikeouts. I turned for this game on, and he was pitching a, a shutout. A 63. Okay. He, I turned the game on. He was pitching a shutout. I'm like, Ken Waldachuk, baby, let's go. And then the very next pitch, he gave up a home run, and I would turn the game <laughs> off. I'm watching the I Tigers. I went with Scooble picking, hoping the A's were a, a good opponent to, to pick on. And they were indeed seven innings, two hits, no runs, one walk, 10 punches for an 86. Ooh. One of the higher ones. Uh, and although last week I had a 90. Okay. So, um, so I, I, I had into our last, uh, outing of the season down 14 to six, but I've won two in a row. So if I can get hot, I'll feel pretty good. Um, I've been streaky. That's I've been a, way streakier than. Does it feel like a moral victory? <laughs> Yeah, no, it does. And I I also okay. had Eduardo Rodriguez lined up on Sunday. I was thinking of picking him, and he had another great outing as well. So uh, okay. probably was safe either way. Um, Homer Chase results. Let's get to these because you picked Luis Arise. Uh, he ended Not up only – you were, you're de, you're defending a one-homer one, one homer lead for the season, 27-26, uh, <laughs> and you picked Luis Arise. Uh, he only played three games because of uh, injury. So he didn't hit any homers, also because he's loose to rise and he doesn't typically right. hit homers. But um, yeah. I respect the pick. And, it's like uh, bringing in a position pitcher to yeah. or a position player to pitch, but you have a one run lead, and you're like, "Get out there, Austin Hedges! Let's, let's protect <laughs> this one run lead in the ninth. That's gonna go well." I picked J Rod, who 
He honestly should be at zero for the week because he contributed a homer on the wrong side and it should mm-hmm. balance out. However, I'm going to take the one homer he gave me, and that ties up the ball game heading into the last week of the year, 27 to 27. This is as much drama as we could have asked for, <laughs> yeah, uh, especially considering good. how little drama there's been in the arms race. So last week of the year, seven more days. Uh, yeah, I'm going to let you pick because I'm actually kind of weighing a lot of different things here. And there's a chance we want the same guy. And I want you to have that first track. There is a chance. I didn't check to see which teams you still have available, but I was looking at my list and I went down, like I'm going through Rockies. I'm going just through like, you know, who's on the, who's on the Tigers? Like, do I, (laughs) yeah. And then all of a sudden I I could (laughs) swear, I just heard like an angel choir go, and I see Toronto is still available. And I'm like, oh my gosh. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Let's let's look because I know Vladdy Guerrero Jr. has had uh, a knee issue lately. So I'm looking at today's box. I'm like, is he is he playing or is he out of the lineup? I look, he's in, not only is he in the lineup today, he has already hit a home run. Two, two home runs. Okay. It was one when I looked. Great. Lock him in. Vladimir Guerrero Jr. Bringing him in as closer. Let's lock this sucker down. Let's win this home run chase and annihilate whoever it is that Steven Nesbitt is going to try and pick <laughs> to win this thing in the last week. So that was my, here was my number one guy, but I, I felt okay punting because there's some other options. So I looked through and I think the only 30 homer guy on the board for me with my teams and let me just rattle these off. I know Brian's like, come on, you guys finish up the episode, but we got to do this for the fans. If you guys want to look at who we could have picked and suffer for us, um, I've got Baltimore, Detroit, Kansas City, Milwaukee, Oakland, Pittsburgh, San Francisco, St. Louis, Tampa, Toronto, Washington left. Levi has Baltimore, Cleveland, Colorado, Detroit, Kansas City, Milwaukee, Oakland, Pittsburgh, San Francisco, St. Louis, Toronto. Uh, a couple a couple repeats there. Um, uh, there's some teams we're clearly trying to avoid. So here are the names that I have at the top of my board, and I'm going to pick off top. I'm just going to pick whatever feels right in 10 seconds. I have Bobby Witt, Lane Thomas. Nolan Arenado and, and, and Paul Goldschmidt. The only 30 homer guy I have is Isaac Paredes of the Rays. And mm-hmm. I just don't feel confident they're going to start all the way down the line. Mm, now he might because they, they're trying to get the to first place. But assuming that's out of range by the weekend, uh, he may not play. So that's why I'm leaning away from some guys who may not may not do this. I'm going to go with my gut here. I'm going to go with the red hot Kansas City Royals and Bobby Witt Jr. Um, wow. You're going to win the, the triple chase. Yeah, well, I certainly will. Oh, and so the way this ends for the Royals, they play the Tigers for three and the Yankees for three. I could I could find a guy that has seven games in the season or in this week, but I'm gonna go with that. Bobby Witt Jr. I'm gonna put um you know put my bet on one of the great seasons, sophomore seasons we had here. Um so wow. Bobby so Witt comes down Vlad Jr. A couple of juniors. Two, yeah, it was about it comes down to two sons of big leaguers who are now big leaguers themselves each representing an honorable side of this season long challenge. Um, I'm trying to wax poetic here. It's just not working. Just let's go, Vladdy. Come on. You can hit more home runs than Bobby. He's a speed guy. Just do it. Just beat him. (laughs) All right. It's time for us to go. Thanks for listening. Thanks to Brian for producing today's show, tonight's show. You can find our work all week long at theathletic.com. Subscribe to The Athletic during our extended summer sale for $1 per month for the first year at theathletic.com slash baseball show. Sign up for the Wind Up, The Athletic's daily baseball newsletter with Levi and Ken Rosenthal for absolutely free. Coming up next in your feed, Levi, Starkville, Jason Stark and Doug Landville with special guest Tito Francona. Wrapping up what may be the last year of his managerial career. He hasn't really said it straight out. Read the tea leaves. It seemed like this might be it. He's had an incredible, incredible career across several organizations. So you're going to want to hear that one. Give us a follow on Twitter. Levi is at 32EFIS, and I'm at Stephen J. Nesbitt. We'll be back on Thursday with more of What's on Deck. Bye.